Hello and welcome to Coding with Curry. This is my first official Flutter coding video and I wanted to get started with the most important topic which is Flutter navigation. I also hope that you enjoy the new intro that I have. It's pretty cool. I like the music and the visuals. So yeah, so let's get started. So if you see here, um, I have a main.dart. It has a floating action button. So this is the default app without a lot of the extra code in there that they put for the counter. Um, I took out that code and I put in some text. It just says coding with curry. So I took out all the counter code and I put in the text and that's pretty much it. So I also created three pages here. I created a login stateful widget, a feed stateful widget, and a detail stateful widget. So these are really basic widgets right now. They all just contain a scaffold, center, and text. Um, same with the, the feed and the detail. So if you don't know much about Flutter, like if you're pretty new to Flutter, just really fast, the app bar defines what goes in the app bar and the body of the scaffold is pretty much uh, self-explanatory. And then we add a center here, which centers the widget horizontally. And we have a child of the center, which is a column. And we have a main axis center, which is the vertical alignment here. And we have a text details. So yeah, that's it for these three widgets here. Um, so let's go back to our main here. I want to get rid of this. I could use it, but I don't really want to for this video. And we're actually gonna get rid of the state here. So you'll see why we will do this in a second here. Let's just remove that. And for our main here, we actually just want a stateless widget. So we have our material app, title, theme, home. So our home is where our initial page goes. We have our login page here, right? So we, let's import our login here, pages, login. And let's put that here. So we'll do login page. So that's how you define a widget that you import. It has to be the same name as this class here. So let's reload this. And as you can see, we have a different page here now. So if we go to our login, we have our text coding with curry and I created a style uh, to make the font size bigger. So this is how you make the font size bigger in Flutter. It's very different than React Native, as you can see. So I prefer the way that Flutter does it, but some people prefer using style sheets um, in React Native. I understand why. Let's go back to our main here. So we want to add navigation to our app between all of these pages here between the login, feed, and detail. So our main will contain the routes that our app needs. So that's the standard way that you would actually do it here. So the material app is a very important widget here. It also has a few other uh, parameters. You can actually do something called routes. So this is where you actually define where your routes, like what your routes are. I'm gonna use the login and the detail screen here for now, just to show you how this is. But we're going to use a better way in this video coming up soon, so. But for now, you define a route by just doing forward slash, and we'll say login. And then it takes in a context here. So you pass in the context that you have, the build context. And then you want to say what this route actually returns. So it goes to the login page. And then we, uh, I'm just gonna copy and paste this. And then we want our next route to be um, feed. So we'll go to the feed page. Actually, let's see what this is. Feed page, yep. Oh yeah, we need to import that. So import and then pages feed. Okay. Yeah, don't forget to import your your widgets if you want to use them in a different file. So this is the basic routing setup. It's really simple. Like Flutter includes a very good routing system in the framework by default. And with React Native, you actually have to implement that yourself using a different library, which has its pros and cons. So let's uh, go to our login page here. 
we want to navigate from our login page to our feed page. So we're actually going to create a, um, a button that we put into our app here. So there's two different types of buttons that are mainly used in Flutter. There's the raise button and the flat button. We're going to use the raise button just because let's do child. So child is what the actual content of the button is. So normally you would just do like a text. You could do whatever you want. It could be like an image or something different. So, but we're going to call this, uh, the text will be go to feed. And then we also need the on pressed. So these are the two primary parameters that you'll be using with the button. So we're going to decide where this goes. This should look very familiar to React Native, like this syntax here, on pressed, and then arrow function. And then we have an object called navigator. This is built into Flutter by default. And then you can do push and pop. So if you're familiar with the concept of a stack, then that should sound very familiar. Push means that you're pushing something onto a stack. Pop means that you're taking something off of the top of the stack. So we're going to do push, and there's different um, options here. There's push replacement, which replaces the current widget in the stack. And there's push, and there's push named. So push named means that you're telling what widget to push by its name, which is what we actually want, because we defined our routes by a name. So we're going to pass in the context, which is done by default here. And we have to make sure that our route name is the same as our name here. So we're going to do, uh, oops, let's go back here. And we name this the same. You don't need the, actually, yeah. So just forward slash, and then we're going to do feed. So let's reload this. And you can see we have our button here. So let's press go to feed. And then you see we have our feed here. So let's go to our feed here. You can see our text is here with our app bar. And yeah, that's pretty simple. So pretty straightforward. And it puts in a back arrow by default. So you, if you press this, you go back to our login screen. If you've done React Native, you can already see how this is a big improvement over React Native. It's a lot simpler. But there's a lot more that we can do with this. So let's see what we can do about this here. I want to talk about going back. Because if you create an app where you have a login screen and you have a feed, so after you log in, you go to the feed, right? But normally in an app, you don't want to let the user go back to the login screen from the feed screen if they're logged in. Only when they're logged out, you want that to be available. So. We actually want this to not be an option in your app to go back to the login screen. So how do we do that? If we go back to our main screen here, actually, if we go back to login, as I mentioned before, we have different push options here. We also have push replacement named. So let's see what this does. Let's save this and we'll reload. And let's press go to feed. And as you can see here, we don't have that option here now. So what that did is this push replacement named replaced the login widget with our, with our feed widget in the stack. So our login widget is no longer part of the stack and our feed is the bottom of the stack. So that's normally how you would have a login screen and feed screen set up. So let's add our, uh, detail screen to our main here. So let's copy paste. We'll put detail and import pages detail dot dart. And then we will call this detail page as we have named it in our detail file. And then we go to our feed here, and we want to add the same button. So I'm just going to copy and paste this to save some time. So let's go to our feed here, and we have our text. Let's add our button here and go to detail. And for this one, we actually want to have it just be pushed named because we want to be able to go back to our feed. So then we have to call this by the right name, which is detail. So let's save this. 
reload this. So we press go to feed, and then we have our go to detail button here. Go to detail, and as you can see, we are on our detail screen. We can see our detail text here, and let's press this, and we go back to our feed screen. So we can go back and forth between our feed and detail screen here pretty easily. So there's one more thing I want to talk about with the arrow at the top here. You could actually customize this if you want to. So let's go back to our detail screen here. So in our app bar, we also have uh, access to something called leading. So this is the leading widget that appears in our app bar, which in our case is this arrow here. So the arrow is here by default, but we can actually change the look of it if we want to. So let's use something called an icon button. This is built into Flutter. Uh, it takes in a icon parameter here. So we are going to call this, or let's use an icon class here. And so you have to call this by icon, and then you have to call the actual icons class. So do icons, which is part of Flutter. And then there's different options here. I'm going to use one called arrow back. And one pressed here. Let's actually put that there. So on unpressed, we do navigator dot. This time we do pop because we want to take off this screen from the top of the stack. So context, and then this takes in another parameter here, which is a result. We won't get into that in this video, but for now, let's set it to false. This is good if you want to pass data back to the previous screen. So, so now we have this unpressed callback here. So let's uh, reload this. Make sure you look at the arrow here too. So let's go to our detail screen again. And as you can see, the actual arrow button is different. So we can choose a different icon just to make sure. So let's do a uh, mail, for example. Uh, hot reload this. So now you have the mail here. And it, it does the same thing. So it just goes back to the previous screen where it pops the, the detail screen from the stack. So let's change this back to arrow back. OK, so that's a very uh, high level view of the navigator. Very easy in Flutter. So now you might be asking, how do we pass data to the next screen? So let's say we are on a list of um, items in our feed, and we want to go to our detail screen, and we want to pass in some data from that item in the feed to our detail screen. In this case, we have something we have another option here in our main. It's called one generate route. One generate route is a way to have logic before your route is actually processed by Flutter. We want to tell the route to send data to the next screen, for example. And I'll explain this more in a second as we write this code. So this takes in a route settings object. You probably won't be doing a lot with this. But if you want to change the settings, you have access to it here. OK, so yeah, it returns a, um, a route. So think of this as middleware between you specifying a route and you actually going to the route itself. Using the routes in this way is a good way to go to the next screen without actually caring about what the next screen needs beforehand. But if you want the next screen to be aware of some data, then you should use one generic route. And you can combine these together. So I'm actually just going to comment this out for now. And we're just going to use one generate route for all of our routes. I like to do this because I have more control in the future if I want to add more logic to my routing. It's already there. So I don't have to go back and refactor too much. And one generate route, our routes are defined in Flutter by forward slashes. The same way that you define routes on the web is the way that you would define a route in your app on Flutter. You want to actually check your, your path elements by uh, just using the split function for strings. We'll say final list string. So your route, actually, let's, uh, I'm going to put this up here. A route will be defined as something like uh, detail. Uh, and then we'll have, then you can have something like a number, for example. But for ours, we're going to have detail ID, and then we're going to have the actual ID number here. 
So there's different ways to set up running in general, but I like to have it in this format. So each of these is a item in your list, for example. So actually this here, there's nothing here before this first slash, but this is seen as index zero, and this will be seen as index one, and this will be index two. We have a list of strings, we'll call it path elements, and then you get it from your settings here. So we have settings, and then we have something called name. So if you look at the docs here for name, it says the name of the route, which for example, slash settings. So we'll do settings.name, and then we'll do a split. So this is just a string um, function, and then we'll split it on the slash. So now we have a list of elements. So as I mentioned before, we have zero, one, two. So I'm gonna put this down here actually. So now we have our path elements. We wanna check to see if the first path is an empty string, which it should be. So we wanna say if path elements, and then we have an array, zero is not equal to an empty string, then we actually want to return because something went very wrong with our routing. Let's just return a little to get rid of this. So if our routing is not done in this manner, then we return null. So that's the first step. And then I like to do a switch statement. You don't have to do a switch statement, but I prefer switch statements in general over a bunch of if else blocks. So we'll do switch and then we'll do path elements. And then we'll check the first item. So our first item will be login, feed, or detail in our case here. We wanna check our first case, which is login. We wanna return something, right? So if you're not doing the routing in this manner here, you actually have to specify the material page route itself. We do material page route, and then material page route takes in a builder a builder is just a widget. It builds the primary context of the route. So we'll do builder. And then we do something similar to up here. We do, we'll define it as build context. And then arrow function. And then we do same logic as above, login page. Okay. And that takes care of our first case here. So if it detects that we have a forward slash login, it goes to the login page. So let's, uh, I'm gonna copy and paste this for the next one. This one will be, uh, let's do feed, and we'll go to the feed page. And then for the last case, I'm going to do something a bit different. Instead of detail, I'm going to do detail ID. So detail ID, and we'll have to change this later in our feed screen, but for now we'll do detail ID. Okay, so for our detail ID, we need to check a few different things. We are going to make sure that we have a third item in our path elements array here. So we want to check this here. So we want to say final string. Remember it's a string, not an int. So everything in our root is a string. So final string, and then we do detail ID equals path elements, and then we check two. So we can actually print this just to check. So print it to our console. So we do print item ID, and then to actually use this detail ID, you do the dollar sign and then item ID. Very simple to do this in a flutter, so. So let's now check to see if our item ID is empty. So to check if that's true, we do if item, item ID, oh, sorry, detail ID. We do detail ID dot is empty. So this checks to see if this is empty or not. So if this is empty, then let's copy and paste this in here. We'll go to our detail page. Let's put this here too. So we'll do the same thing. 
but we'll come back to this in a little bit. So let's define a default here, just to be safe. We'll do the same, we'll actually just return to the same screen. Actually, let's just return null here. So we're not actually done with this yet. We have our routing set up here for our detail, but we're not actually doing anything with this detail ID. Let's call this detail ID to, to be consistent. So now we actually want to go to our detail screen. There's a few things here that I want to do first. So we actually want to pass in data to our detail screen. I'm going to call this final. So like, get used to using final in Flutter. If you're new to Flutter, get used to using the final keyword. It's standard practice to use final when you're defining your variables that don't need to change. So let's do final string, and we're going to call this uh, detail info. So we have to add it to the constructor too. We just, just do this dot detail info. So if you come from an object-oriented background, this should look very familiar. So now we have our detail info as part of this here. So what do we want to do with this? We want to actually show it as our text in our app bar. So instead of detail here, we want to pass, or we want to show whatever string was passed into here. So to access something in your stateful widget from your state, you have a variable that you have access to called widget. So you'll be using this a lot in your app. So get used to using this keyword here, widget. And then we do dot detail info. So, so let's go back to our main here. As you can see here, we have errors because we're not passing anything into our detail page. Normally, if you have an ID, you would actually pass the ID into some function that returns what the item is in your list, for example. So for our app here, we're just going to define a string that represents what we'll show in the detail screen. So we'll just do string, and uh, let's call this item name. And we'll use another string again. So we'll do item detail. And we will pass in, um, let's pass in detail ID here. OK, so now we can pass in our item name to our detail page here. So in a normal app, this would probably be like an entire object with different parameters, but here we'll just do a string. So we're passing in the item name to the detail page here. Let's take into account that our detail ID here is empty. In this case, we don't want to pass in the item name. We want to pass in something like, uh, let's do no detail, just to show something different in that case here. And we'll put this down here, since we're not using it in this block. So actually, we can get rid of this now, because we defined our default here. So now we're passing in no detail if we have no detail ID. So this would happen in the case that we have some string like, like this, and then we have detail ID, and then we have a slash, but we don't have anything here. So so now we want a way to show different uh, details in our detail screen. So I want to actually go back to our feed screen first. Actually, let's run this and see what happens. So we have go to feed. So let's press go to detail. As you can see, nothing happened and we get an error. So let's look at the error real quick. We have generated for the route or search for the following order. So you can see that cannot find a generator for the route slash detail. So be very careful about using uh, all these different string routes in your app. So here you can see we have slash detail, but we have no route defined in our main for that. So let's just put in something like one here uh, just to test it. And we'll reload this, go to feed, and go to detail. And as you can see, we still have an error. Cannot find generator for slash detail. So let's add our correct route. So we said detail ID, right? So let's do detail ID. 
Uh, let's save this and reload this. So let's see what happens now. Go to detail. We get another error. Let's see what the error is now. So you can see that we have an index error. Our route path only has two items. It has the zero and the one here, but it has no three. So now we have an empty, like an empty string here, and then we have detail ID, and then we have an empty string here. So let's reload this again and go to feed, go to detail. And as you can see, we have no detail here. So this is why I created that other if statement for the string being empty. So we have no detail here for that. So let's go back here to our feed. I want to actually create different options to show different detail strings. So I'm actually going to create a function up here. We're going to call this uh, build navigation button. And I'm doing this so I don't have to type this out like three or four times. Before we decide what to pass in, let's just copy and paste this here. So we're going to return this widget here. So we need to set our return type, which would be a widget. And put that there. So we want to pass in our text string here for our button. We're going to pass in the context, and we want to pass in our route path. So we're going to pass in a build context. I'm going to pass in a text for the button. So we'll do string button text. And then we'll pass in a string, let's call it route string. OK, so for our button text, we'll have button text here. And context is context. And then for the route here, we'll have route string. OK, so you'll see why we build this function in a second. So let's go to build navigation button. And uh, here we will just call this instead. And we'll pass in context first, and then go to detail string second. And then we'll pass in this here. So let's get rid of this. And now we have this here. So let's see if this still works as before. So go to feed. Go to detail. Actually, we need to put this back. So let's reload this again. So we'll do go to feed. So we have go to detail, and then we have no detail here as we expect. So I want to create a few different things here. We'll keep this here, but we'll name this error. So We'll copy and paste these three times. We're going to call this detail one, detail two, and detail three. And then we'll have the detail ID here as one, two, and three. Let's reload this. And now we have go to feed. And then we have our buttons here. Detail one, detail two, detail three. So if we look at our detail again, we're passing. Actually, let's go to our main. So to build our detail, if this is not empty, then we put our detail into here. So we have this string, item detail one, for example. And then we'll pass that to detail name or detail page here. And then in our detail page, we'll take that string and we'll put it into our app bar as our text. So let's see if that works. Go to detail one, item detail one, detail two, item detail two, detail three, item detail three, and then error, no detail. So this is the very basic setup for navigation in Flutter. The only thing you really have to learn is how to set up your routing. Just a little bit of practice and you'll get used to it. So I hope this all makes sense. Um, the routing is a bit different than React Native. You have to make sure that you keep these slashes in here. Don't forget the slashes. It's just a part of Flutter and you'll get used to it over time. So yeah, stay tuned for more and happy coding.